Good morning, Good morning, West, morning Geauga. West Geauga. Today, Today is Wednesday, Wednesday November, November 11th. 11th. I'm Aiden. And I'm Samantha. And these are your morning announcements. There will be a virtual student council meeting today at 2.30 p.m. You will receive an email with the Zoom link on Wednesday. See Mrs. Meyer with questions. The Interact Club's annual food drive is now underway and will run from until Friday, November 20th. Because of the pandemic, we are not collecting food items this year. Instead, please consider helping those in need by donating any money you are able. We accept cash or checks made out to West Geauga Board of Education. Or you can visit the school store on Infinite Campus to make a donation. See Ms. Tal Talti with any questions. Seniors and senior parents, are you looking for a way to congratulate your favorite graduate? You can purchase a grad ad to be published in the yearbook. Visit www.jostensadservice.com or our school website for submission information. The deadline is November 13th. Email year.book at westg.org with any questions. Softball open cages and pitching will start Saturday, November 14th. Exciting news, the West Geauga High School hockey team is back. It is a co-ed club team. They are looking for someone with a desire to play goalie and will also accept a few more skaters. Contact Mrs. Garrett at denise.garrett at westg.org or Mr. Stahura. Happy birthday to Grace Getgo, Elijah Tolan, Kayla Schaefe, Gabriella Millikin, and James Hammonds. Thank you, West Geauga. These are all your morning announcements. Have a great day. Stay tuned for a special announcement. Good morning, West Geauga students and staff. My name is Aiden Bendokis, and I am coming to you today, Veterans Day, with a very special guest. I would like to welcome Mr. Rader, a United States military veteran. We have developed a list of nine questions that Mr. Rader has agreed to answer regarding his service. Without further ado, Mr. Rader, good morning. How I'm, are you? I'm good. How are you guys today? We're doing pretty good. We're glad to have you here. What branch did you serve in and what was your rank and position? So I joined the Army um, in 2004 and I was a staff sergeant when I got out of the Army. I was a military police officer. All right. Why did you join the military? Uh, there's a lot of reasons, but uh, my dad was a career serviceman. He served in the military. He was the first sergeant. He served for 22 years and uh, this year actually marks his 40th year working for the Army. He still, he, when he got out of the Army, he still works for them. So that was a big influence. I was born on an Army base. Um, I grew up on Army bases all over the world. Uh, my grandparents, both my grandfather on my mom's side and the grandfather on my dad's side, were both in the Navy and the Marines. Um, I have uncles and aunts that were all in the service, so it was sort of a family thing. 9-11 uh, contributed to it, too. I was a freshman in college when that happened, and um, um, obviously it impacted my life in a pretty big way. A uh, bunch of reasons, but, but those are the main ones, I guess. Wow, absolutely. So at boot camp, describe your best and worst moment. Gosh. Um, I've told this story in my class a few times, but, but probably the thing that sticks out to me the most is the first week of basic training. Um, they call it red phase, is the first three weeks of basic training, and it's basically the time when they try to take you from being a civilian to being in the service um, and, and taking away the individual and making you a, a part of a team, part of a group. Um, and just, it, just imagine if you're an athlete, imagine the worst physical training that you've ever gone through. Um, two a days for football or conditioning for your sport. Um, it's that, but for 12 or 14 hours a day, um, I'll spare you the, the graphic details, but I got sick more than once um, from doing physical exercise. So probably the worst memories are that, but then the best memories are, um, you know, after that first red phase is over, they start to um, kind of build you back up. And, and uh, I remember the night that we got to be called military police officers and we got our badge and everything and very emotional event. And uh, that's for sure the best memory that I have from that time. 
Absolutely. So, so while you were in the service, where did you get to travel? So I started out in Fort Leonard Wood in Missouri. Uh, people joke and say it's Fort Lost in the Woods because it's in the middle of nowhere in the middle of Missouri. Um, from there, I went to South Korea. So I was stationed on the DMZ uh, for a little bit over a year. Um, to the town called Dongdachan. It's about two miles from uh, the North Korean border. Um, and then after a year there, I went to Seoul, South Korea. So I was in the capital of Korea for about two years. And um, from there, I went to uh, San Antonio for at, at an Air Force base, Lackland Air Force Base, where I got to be uh, a canine handler. And then I got to uh, be stationed at Fort Knox, Kentucky, where they keep all the gold, right? Um, and I was there for my last few years. And then after I actually got out, I, I uh, went with a military contracting company to Afghanistan for about nine months and then um, came home for a month. And then I was uh, in Iraq for another 13 months. So been all over the place thanks wow. to the military. It, it certainly sounds like it. So how did you stay in touch with loved ones back home while you were away? So a lot of letters and basic training, you get to write letters, uh, get one phone call a week. Um, and then while I was overseas, I had a Vonage phone, which I don't know if exists anymore, but it's basically a, a, a regular phone number for the states that people would call and it was no long distance. So it worked out pretty well. Wow, did you make any close friendships while in the service? Yeah, that's probably my best memory from the military. Um, when you spend 14 hours a day with people, um, you tend to get to know them very well. And, you, and some of my best friends today are people that I met while I was in the service. Um, definitely good relationships are built when you're, you're in a, a tough situation together. Sure. Now, do you remember the day that you got out? What was it like? How did you feel? So honestly, I remember more about the day that I joined the Army than the day that I got out. Um, I, I don't know if it's just an impactful moment in my life, more so when I joined than it was when I got out, because like I said, I transitioned into military contracting. So I honestly can't tell you about the day that I got out. I, I know I felt relieved that I didn't have to shave anymore. I haven't shaved my face since then. So probably the only thing I remember from that, really. Sure. Now, describe your career path after you got out. Was your continued education supported by the GI Bill? Sure. So uh, when I got out, like I said, I went to Afghanistan. I didn't do any college or anything like that there. But then when I went to Iraq, I actually started a master's degree program in security management that was paid for by the military. And then uh, when I left Iraq, I went to college to become a teacher. Um, my bachelor's degree is criminal justice, so I had to do a master's program to become a teacher. Um, and that's how I'm here now. And, and all of it was paid for by the GI Bill. So they pay for your school, your books, and they give you a housing allowance. So it's pretty nice. Wow, that really is amazing. Well, Mr. Rader, thank you very much for coming in and talking with us this morning, and uh, happy Veterans Day. Thank you. And one last thing real quick. Don't thank me today. Um, if you could, I, I appreciate it, but there's 800 of you here, and I don't want everyone to come say thank you to me. Um, I would rather you go online and go to one of the websites uh, that help others. So there's a website, operationgiveback.com, and then another one, uh, amillionthanks.org. So those are both websites that you can go on and just send a message to somebody that's deployed. One of my favorite things that I had when I was overseas was getting messages from people I didn't know. Um, so go to one of those websites, thank somebody else that you know. I appreciate it, but uh, I, I don't want you guys to thank me. Uh, 800 people in the school is a little much. So um, thank you for having me and thank you for supporting veterans.